Hey everyone, I'm Patrick Brown, and this is the evolution of my art style. I've been a professional artist at Marvel for the past seven years or so, drawing characters like Spider-Man, uh, the Avengers, and X-Men. You might have even seen my work on some merchandise like toy packaging, kids t-shirts, birthday cakes, uh, stuff like that. It's been absolutely wild. But the reason I want to do this video is I think it's really important to highlight the evolution of my art style. So I'm going to go through the years, starting from when I practiced digital art, all the way through trying to find my style, getting inspiration and growing, until eventually we get to the present where I feel like my style is where I want it to be. I think this will be a great insight and hopefully can help you, especially if you're a new artist, trying to find yourself and you'll be able to see the steps that I've taken through the years. We're going to start at the very beginning, right back when I was just trying to practice digital art. I had always been drawing from a very young age, mostly just sketching and colored pencils right up until college. So let's take off from when I started to practice digital art at about 2006. <laughs> this brings me back. So this is one of the first digital paintings I've ever done. And uh, this is the Punisher, I think. Yeah, I really didn't know anything about what kind of style I, I wanted, really. <laughs> wow, this one's really bad. This one's got no anatomy. Look at that head. I was really into San Andreas, like massively. My biggest inspiration was their loading screens. You know, the artwork for, um, that Rockstar Games always had really inspired me all the way back since GTA 3 and then I tried to take that style and like move forward with it a little bit more and um, this is supposed to be me holding a gun and running away from an explosion <laughs> this is quite funny really so I made a little comic book of my own and uh, it's just me and my friends back in the day and as you can see with the art style it's just like I, I was trying to go with a bit more of that Grand Theft Auto -y kind of look with really bold outlines I did this during one of my first jobs it was the first time that I ever got my hands on an actual graphics tablet before that was everything was done with a mouse can you believe it this was the first time I really got to push my creativity to that next level to try and work out how I can do digital art with a pen and like treat it like a real ink pen um, it's pretty woeful really like it's got this horrible muddy kind of dark shading feeling to it this is one of the next ones I did and I was really trying to practice some more um, trying to find a style I really couldn't figure it out at all so this one doesn't have any outlines at all it's more of a painted look as I look at it now it's very uh, muddy again I really couldn't understand the shading so this one was very heavily inspired by the uh, GTA 4 artwork as well and here's a good example so as I pushed forward I really I realized that I wanted to come back to my cartoony roots a little bit more almost a comic look kind of vibe to him but uh, yeah so this is one of my first big pictures I've ever tried to attempt so I kind of found my style a little bit I had a lot of free time at work so I actually used it for something this is all the different characters from all the GTA series and I called this series Grand Theft Auto Legends and I'm, I ended up making a few of these actually and then I went through a bit of a goth stage. This is back in about 2007, so sounds about right. And this was next. I did a Hitman piece. Um, I absolutely love that game series. And the style probably kind of works for this too. I did a piece on I Am Legend with Will Smith. Okay, so this is where I had a lot of fun. I love Grand Theft Auto, the whole series. This is another Grand Theft Auto Legends piece. And it's also probably where my Deviant Art page picked up. And I started to get a bit more of a following to as well, which was really cool. You can see that art style is still there. I've got those really dark outlines and those, that kind of shiny skin tone as well. I really didn't know what I was doing with the uh, coloring. My next piece was this Scarface one. I absolutely love that movie so I really wanted to do something special. I did a Hulk piece here where he was having a workout. I actually had this comic book idea back then and um, I made a cover like a mock cover. You can see my, my style here is kind of reverted back a little bit. I've got very heavy black dark colors, very gothic. Um, yeah, I really don't like this face. I have no idea what he, what's going on there. Dutch from Predator. I really had no idea about anatomy now that I'm looking at it. Look at this wrist and all those muscles. They, they are completely wrong. It looks like he's got a big cramp in his, in his arm there. Really had no idea, but I tried. Ah, uh, here we go. This one was a really big piece I did. I really wanted to do a piece of fan art on Grand Theft Auto 4 and uh, the craziness that goes on inside that game. I used to have so much fun in that game. I loved it. I really don't like the color scheme I've got going on over this whole piece. And I think I started to push myself a bit more here. Yeah, a lot of fun. 
Here we go, I love Vice City, my favorite game. But yeah, zooming in, I really don't like this face, it's kind of really whack. And again, these backgrounds, I tried to make them nice and simple. But this style is starting to form into something that I would have probably today. Ah yes, this is The Dark Knight when that came out and I really wanted to do a good standalone Joker piece. Yeah, I think that looks okay still today. It's, it's still pretty whack with the forehead here. I've got a lot of really dark lines there. I probably should have softened that up a bit. All right, my biggest problem back then, this is what I can see now, is uh, the shirt details. Like, look at those wrinkles. They don't bend at all. They're completely straight all the way. Metal Gear Solid 4, and I was starting to do high textures again. And uh, I wanted to start putting a lot of detail into my work. Snake Eater, yeah, I love this game. And uh, yeah, we got Big Boss here. Um, yeah, I think I started to push myself a little bit more with detail here. I, I like the kind of harness going up through there. Um, I'm not sure about the build. I think he looks a bit teenager -y here. And the foreshortening. I was really trying to do some cool foreshortening, having that arm come forward. Yeah, not too bad. The faces are a bit whack, though. I don't I don't like her face at all. Nico Bellic. Yeah, I remember this one. Um, I remember specifically, I, my goal was to try and go hyper detail with this and make it feel like a living, breathing city. I remember that. His face is kind of... It looks kind of like him, but I did this thing with the eyes. I don't know why I was... That's way out. I need to put that back in a bit more. But uh, Fallout 3, my favorite, one of my favorite series as well back then. Dog meat looks okay, but as I look at it, he looks like he's missing a leg, but he's actually got it propped up. It just doesn't read well. I think I've pushed the grunge details too far. That's what I'm seeing right now. But another Grand Theft Auto Legends piece. This is when I started to push myself and do bigger scenes with a lot more people. I can see my style coming through a little bit more here from what it is today. Grand Theft Auto, The Lost and Damned. Here's another Grand Theft Auto piece. This is Chinatown Wars. I have really tried to push myself to do a better perspective and something a little bit more interesting with the view. Infamous. This one's quite interesting because the background, I really wanted to go hyper, almost realistic. Um, there's no line work on it, but it's very grungy. This is my first Red Dead Redemption piece. Uh, so this is John Marston. And um, yeah, not too bad. I really wanted to go with something really, really dramatic. And just a simple striking image of a, of a guy standing there and it just tells a story. Another Grand Theft Auto piece here. I really wanted to go with something really dynamic and intense. Ah, here we go. So this is a Grand Theft Auto 4 tribute. And um, I wanted to do, so Nico Bellic and then just little panels of stuff that happens in the game, all the characters. And I really started to develop my style a lot more by doing this, which really helped. Just by doing a lot of repetition and just drawing all these different characters really helped me push forward. After that, I really just wanted to do large pictures and just keep doing them. So I, I made this one and I've got all these little Easter eggs down here. Assassin's Creed and here I tried to do some really large backgrounds and like a crazy perspective Avatar I love this movie and um, I really wanted to make this one very colorful and dynamic as well Bioshock um, so this one was fun I tried to do it from the guy's perspective you can see with my backgrounds they're still very similar to like that really old Scarface one I remember I really wanted to capture that atmosphere of Bioshock here Ah, uh, here we go. This one's pretty exciting for me, actually. I actually made a big comic strip on Grand Theft Auto Online. So the first panel reads, I've got my guy, this is my online character, and then boom, I shoot the guy off the bike, and then uh, I get on the bike and I'm trying to get away from that speeding helicopter. There's me shooting back at the helicopter, and then there's a big dramatic scene here with the helicopter trying to shoot me down, and then there's this female character at the end of the runway, has a rocket launcher, <laughs> turns around, big dynamic kind of angle there, I'm speeding up, there's the chopper, and then boom, so that's the rocket getting fired off, that's my reaction, <laughs> I kick the bike out, the rocket goes under my, under my legs, and then boom, and there's the bike getting thrown into her face from when I kicked it out, and then I safely travel to the ground in a parachute. I can tell with my style, I'm trying to go a little bit more dynamic, it's actually a little bit cleaner as well, and um, I'm doing a lot more details with mechanics and vehicles and things like that as well. Really trying to push myself with these crazy angles at this time. I did a God of War piece, um, so here's Kratos. The anatomy's pretty crazy, pretty whack. Um, it's, it's okay, but it's not perfect. I think the faces I kind of struggled with a little bit. Again, I always like to throw in some Easter eggs. 
Another Red Dead Redemption piece here. I love that game so much. So this is a bigger one. I've got um, John Marston up there riding the horse. And I can tell I was really trying to get a feel for compositions at this point. How the eye can kind of go right around this picture. It reads up the body language of this guy, comes around with John Marston's eye angle. Then it will come down with the horse's head kind of pointing down, makes you point to this interesting part. And then uh, his leg angle can kind of help wind you all the way back around, even with the guy with the lasso, and then all the way back around again. So it's not bad. This was just a quick one. The Joker putting Batman in a headlock. The Predator is trying to go for a bit more detail. Here's a Wolverine, Hugh Jackman piece. This one's more of a sketchy style. I didn't actually do any ink work for this, just sketches. Ah, uh, this one was a big one. So this is for Assassin's Creed Revelations. We got Ezio fighting off all these guys here. And I was really going for that cinema quality kind of uh, scene with some a lot of crazy stuff going on. Bit of an Easter egg there, Altair. So I was really trying to go for finer details, but also trying to get a really good understanding of color tones and setting. I'm a big fan of Dexter and I remember doing this one. I can see here I've struggled a little bit with the faces. It's almost like I was too scared to draw the nose lines and things like that. Even these eyelashes could have been a bit thicker. I was really trying to capture likeness in this one, so that was a real challenge. Yeah, a lot of fun that one. The Amazing Spider-Man. I really went big with this one and I really tried to do a nice background for this. So I was focusing on the city kind of scape, really trying to do those high details and depth. And this is where I was really playing around with some high textures on his suit. That was really good practice. Batman Arkham. I love these games. Uh, this was a really hard piece for me to do. Looking at it now, I kind of wish I went with more darker outlines and held it together a little bit more. I feel like the line work's getting a bit lost in the rendering, but I loved trying to play around with these neon effects. I also wanted to make the composition very closed in and intimidating. <laughs> this was fun. So I did a series of um, Nico Bellic stealing people's cars and things like that, and I called it the Jacking series. It's just kind of how he talks, you know? He's trying to jack people's cars and he's going, this is a jacking in his accent. And uh, we've got um, him stealing the Tron bike here. Halo stealing Master Chief's car. Transformers, this is Bumblebee. <laughs> he doesn't really like being stolen. <laughs> stealing the Terminator's bike. Trying to steal Thor's hammer. Skyrim, stealing the horse. Avatar, Red Dead Redemption. Trying to steal the Iron Man suit. And Spider-Man's gloves. Just a fun little series and it was really good practice as well. Hitman Absolution. So I was really experimenting with atmosphere here, trying to get that kind of nice vibe. So here's another Arnold one from Predator. And I could do a really nice comparison here. So this is four years difference. So I can see that I've really defined the muscles a bit more and I've really got a better understanding of anatomy. The line work's a lot more consistent and a lot more enjoyable to look at. No more of these really dark, heavy lines. But looking at it now and comparing it to stuff that I do these days, the face is actually lacking some line work. I think the eyes could have done with some heavier lines and a bit more confidence around the face overall. Not too bad though, it's nice to see a comparison. The Amazing Spider-Man, again setting up those dynamic angles. Lots of stuff going on in the background. Okay, story time. So this was when I kind of hit a bit of a roadblock in my art. I don't know what I was thinking, but I was kind of getting really bored with my style, which really sucks because I just found my style and I was really happy with it. But for some reason I got bored. So I tried something new here and I went for this really painted kind of sketchy look. This one's called Senior Man and I wanted to do like an old man who is like Superman. And I was really kind of happy with the way this came out and it kind of sparked a new little direction that I took for a little while. I then took it to another level and tried to uh, really do this portrait kind of painted look. It's almost a total 180 of my usual style. It's grungy, rough edges. I think I was really looking for some kind of excitement. I then took it and started experimenting. I did a Hulk. I'm not too happy with that now I look at it. Jim Carrey, Ace Ventura, Ron Burgundy in the newsroom. It was good to experiment actually and I really did learn a bit from doing this style. Tommy Vercetti from Vice City. This one I wanted to get a bit of a cross between the game design and Ray Liotta. Tried to do a bit of a mix. Overall though, that style kind of took me down a dark path. I felt like I lost who I was and I started to kind of revert back and uh, mix them a little bit. So here I started to add a little bit more line work into it again, but still with that kind of painted look, which ultimately made me feel even more lost because I wasn't happy with it. Max Payne 3, and you can see here I'm really trying to get that line work, trying to refine this, trying to find a style. But thankfully I was really reverting back to my original ways. Starting to do more solid lines, trying to get the colors in a bit better. 
but that painted look still kind of stayed a little bit. This is another Grand Theft Auto Legends piece, and I've got all the protagonists for all the games. I love doing all those easter eggs. And then I kind of jumped back a little bit again and I did a more painted style here. This was actually a commission for IO Interactive, who are the makers of Hitman. This one's from Rage. And I started to bring in my line work a bit more here. You can see this guy, and I've got a lot of textures on here. It's texture overload, really. Uncharted 3. Actually, this picture really opened up a lot more opportunities for me. I really started to come back to my original ways here. <laughs> this one's a fun one. Uh, this is from DayZ. This is literally my experience from playing the game, so I drew it. Another commission for IO Interactive. I'm starting to form a better understanding of scenes and some dynamics. And I actually started to introduce some line work into my backgrounds. Bioshock Infinite. And I think this is where I tried to get a better understanding of how to make a character pop from a background. And I'm so glad I'm starting to revert back to the line work now and less of, less of a painted look. Man of Steel. Grand Theft Auto 5 again. This one makes me realize I really didn't understand composition as well as I thought. For some reason I thought it'd be a good idea to have a setup of a complete unknown guy in the foreground. This is supposed to just be the lover of the cheating wife. And there's Michael there, the protagonist. If I think about it now, you know, it obviously would have been way cooler to just have Michael foreground, front and center. There's Franklin. I was really trying to do like a really cool background and get that atmosphere of Grand Theft Auto. And again, I'm so glad I went back to line work for my backgrounds. And Trevor Phillips doing the usual chaotic stuff. Breaking Bad, one of my favorite shows ever. So this one I was really trying to capture likeness, but also with like a cartoony kind of edge to it, a bit of a style. And another Grand Theft Auto piece. Tomb Raider, I remember this. So this is where I started to play around with a lot more ambient light and really tried to get some cool effects going on. The Last of Us, uh, this was a good one. I really enjoyed doing this. I really wanted to go really big with it. I actually made a full tutorial on this on Skillshare. It's worth checking out. It goes through my entire process. Okay, so this picture here changed my life, literally. So because I made some fan art on Guardians of the Galaxy, it caught the eyes of Marvel and they actually emailed me and asked me if I wanted to work for them. And that's where I jumped the chance and I started doing some work for Marvel. And I've been doing it since. I've been working for them for about six years now. It literally changed my life. So I, you know, I quit my graphic design job and I started doing art from home and doing everything here. So it goes to show, it's just one picture. That's all it takes. Here's another piece made for The Last of Us Remastered. And this was actually commissioned by PlayStation. And then I did The Witcher 3. This was a really fun one. And uh, yeah, so we've got Geralt here fighting off all the monsters. Really going for that grungy, desaturated tone through the whole thing. And I did this piece on Uncharted 4. I remember I really wanted to capture that kind of feel of the game. The sunset, the beautiful landscapes. Yeah, I had lots of fun doing this one. I love Nathan Drake. Okay, here we go. So this is a big one that I did. At the time, this was the biggest one I'd ever made. I called it Marvel Villains, but it's actually at Stan's bar. So I really wanted to make it so it's like Stan Lee has his own bar and it's a villain party. So they're all hanging out, causing trouble. They've like broken a wall up the back here. We got Red Skull, Electro, you got the Destroyer in the back. Lots of villains, lots of stuff going on. And that's what I wanted to make. I really wanted to have so much to look at. And I really just wanted it to be a fun piece. I actually have another one in the works and it's gonna be called Marvel Heroes. This one's a bit of a tribute to Aliens. I love that movie so much. I remember this picture is probably one of those ones I spent the most time on with detail. Even the gun has all those kind of little scratches and things like that. Even the Xenomorph nest. I really wanted to push all this detail as much as I could. It was a real challenge. And I've got another couple of jacking pictures here from Nico Bellic. And he's found himself in Metal Gear Solid 5. And another one with Nico, and he's trying to steal one of the cars with Mad Max strapped to the front. Deadpool, I really wanted to do high action here and something absolutely crazy. 2016, and this is my Star Wars picture, Kylo Ren versus Finn. So this is actually a huge commission that I did for a friend of mine. Him and his fiance were getting married and they wanted me to do a wedding invite. So they really wanted me to just bring out their personality and each of their own sides. So this is Emma's side and this is everything that she loves in pop culture. <laughs> it's even funny putting Gollum in there as well. And then we have Josh and he's got all this kind of stuff that he loves. I think Deadpool's my favorite there. But they wanted it to be fun and quirky and I, I really enjoyed doing this one. 
Batfleck from uh, Batman vs Superman. Yeah, here's one that I really wanted to pay attention on high detail again. And zoom in, we can check out the textures that I tried to add here. So the suit texture I made on its own and then duplicated it and then warped it to the body. And another thing that I learned here was how to really darken my character almost to a silhouette and then just bring out highlights like this edge here. And it really introduced a new way and new technique to bring in lighting. Captain America Civil War, this one was huge, but I absolutely loved the concept of the movie and it just got me so excited and I absolutely went nuts with this. So this was a Witcher 3 commission I actually did for CD Projekt Red and DeviantArt combined. So of course, because it was such a big opportunity, I tried to do the most detail of all the little details down through the garden, especially Geralt here, and he's got all those little details in his in his chainmail and everything. It was very challenging, but I, I definitely learned a lot from this. Okay, so this one was a really big one for me because this is where I really, really tried to push myself even more. Okay, I know I keep saying that, but this is the this is the one. I told myself, I was like, I'm going to just keep going with it and keep going over until I have the details to a level where I'm really happy with it, like hyper details. So you can see with the face here and like definitely under the eyes or around the eyes, really wanted to bring in a bit of realism. So it was just a real goal of mine and it's something that I really wanted to try and achieve. And again, here's another one that I really tried to push it a bit more with the detail in this. I was just trying something out, trying to go for more of a gross kind of feeling. 2017. Now, this is a year where I really didn't get to do much of my own fan art kind of stuff. It was all work, really. But this is an official Marvel comic cover I did for Doctor Strange. And you can see here, I'm really playing around with a lot more of those edge lighting effects. And the lightning was really fun to play with in this one. And I was actually so happy to find out that Benedict Cumberbatch was actually reading my comic on the set of one of his movies as Doctor Strange. Here's another official Marvel cover I did. I actually did a huge range of Miles Morales covers. A massive opportunity for me. And I did um, about nearly 20 issues total Here's another cover I did that year for Scarlet Spider. So here's more of the official Marvel work that I did. Kind of helps explain my style a little bit more. I was really trying to push those details and still keep a really cartoony kind of comic feel to match the TV show. 2018, what a year. Uh, this year was really full on with me for work. I got this awesome opportunity here to do a Deadpool poster, but I was actually competing against a bunch of other awesome artists. And the winner gets a trip to New York to go to the premiere. I didn't win in the end, but I got the chance to have my artwork on the official IMAX tickets that you'll see in the cinema. So this one was actually done from work and I did it officially for Marvel. I did a Venom range and they wanted hyper detail. And they actually referred to the one I did as fan art that I showed you just previously. So here's a piece of fan art that I did for Spider-Man PS4. So I've got a bit of a texture going on in there that you can see, even in the eyes. Yeah, that one was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed doing this. Thanos. So here's another one that I did this year. And this one was actually featured in a Marvel workshop that I went to. And I actually had to teach kids how to draw Marvel characters. And I think at this point, I've really kind of settled with my style. I've found where I want to be. And I've really stuck to it. And I haven't really changed it. Or it hasn't evolved anymore since. And I'm really happy that I've found my place. Okay, back to some fan art now. So this is my God of War piece that I made. Kratos raging out. And again, I'm going for some nice textures through here. And one of the main things was making sure the anatomy was okay. Because this was such a tricky angle, I really, really had to study that. Here's another piece of fan art that I did, based off the Witcher TV show with Henry Cavill. So I was really trying to hone in on that colour tone they have in the show. Yeah, I had a lot of fun with this. Ghost Rider. So this is some official work that I've done for Marvel. And I thought I'd mention this one because it really plays up on that foreshortening and perspective. And also doing the fire effects on his head and on the tires was really challenging. Here's another official cover I did. So we've got Miles Morales up the front there. Spider Gwen, we've got a bunch of others up the back. And from the cover, I used that Spider-Man I had to make a piece. So a few things to mention with my style here, you can see with the outlines, I've really kind of learned how to, to blend those black outline colors to the color underneath. So that is kind of faded to a bit of a red instead of, instead of just keeping it as a stark black outline. And this is definitely the biggest picture I've ever done. It took me about four years to complete. These are all video game characters, all hanging out in a scene together. The setting is in Grand Theft Auto and it's at Michael's house. 
You've got the crew from the action adventure games here. Nathan Drake, Lara Croft. In the back we've got Agent 47, you've got Tracer, the Joker, you've got Kratos hanging out with Arthur from Red Dead Redemption. These two legends, we've got Master Chief hanging out with Solid Snake, Crash Bandicoot's trying to trip over Sonic, Abe's Odyssey, and we've got a barbecue line up the back waiting for their sausages. you got Bioshock, Alien, and it doesn't end. I just really wanted to make something fun um, with a lot of different video game characters and just always something to look at. And because I was drawing constantly and so many different characters, I found that it really helped me refine my style even more as I went. Working for Marvel has been a massive turning point in my style, mainly because of the pressure to deliver high quality art. So I really tried to push myself further. Here's some of my official X-Men art that I've done. And this is probably my favorite project I've done for Marvel. Uh, it's called Maximum Venom and I got to venomize each of the heroes. And I actually got to do the concepts as well. So I designed their entire look and it was so much fun and a massive learning experience as well. So I'd come up with these things like these glowing green veins or the, the mouths and the tongues wrapped around, things like that. Same with the little Groot and the little Venus flytraps and things. And there's even a hot toy figure of my Groot, which is awesome. Fantastic Four was another project I got to do the concepts for. And not only did I get to do the suit concepts, but it was also body type and the way they look. And this is where I'm at today. I've been doing a ton of fan art. Here's The Last of Us Part 2. And the Mandalorian fighting off a giant monster with Baby Yoda. And this one was tricky. I did a John Wick piece. And the colours were just so crazy to work with. And I did a Swamp Thing piece here where I really wanted to hone in on those details. This was a time when I was doing some DC fan art and really wanted to push those details as much as I could. This was a time when I was doing some DC fan art and I was testing myself to see how far I could push these details. Take the Killer Croc piece here for example. Um, the scales on Killer Croc were really challenging. I was basically trying to get some hyper details in my style and see how far I could actually push it. And then I went back to doing the crowded shots that I loved. So I did a horror themed piece for Halloween. And you can see all the horror icons there hanging out telling spooky stories. And then I did another super large piece. This is a tribute for everyone who's died in the MCU. And I turned them all into zombies. This was a huge and challenging piece. And that's about it. This is where I am today with this Arkham Knight Batman piece. And if we zoom in a little, you can see I'm trying to experiment a little more with textured brushes to try and get that extra level of detail. It's kind of a little dotted pattern that I learnt when I was doing the Spider-Verse art for Marvel. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, maybe that helped in some way, seeing my journey from the beginning until now. I just wanted to make it clear, especially for beginner artists, that it's definitely worth sticking with, especially if it's a real passion of yours. There are so many opportunities that will open up for you as you improve as an artist. Just keep practicing as much as you can. Also, I wanted to mention I do run an online art class through my Patreon and I'm releasing new tutorials every fortnight. I literally go through my entire art process. Everything that I've ever learned about art, you can have access to. And there are also art competitions for motivation and I set out monthly projects for growth. Plus you get access to all of my art, Photoshop files, high resolution art. So yeah, check it out at patreon.com slash patrickbrown. All right, thank you for watching. Keep drawing and uh, I'll see you later.